In this lab, you need to configure point-to-point -point protocol or PPP. You need to configure point-to-point -point protocol on the link between ISP1 and customer router 1. You also need to configure point-to-point -point protocol but with CHAP between ISP3 and customer 2. In other words, you're going to configure PPP with CHAP or Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. This lab consists of required tasks as well as bonus tasks. The required tasks are once again that you need to configure the link between Customer 1 and ISP 1, this link here with PPP. You need to configure this link using PPP CHAP and a password of Cisco. You then need to configure static default routes on the customer routers pointing to the ISPs. The reason for doing that is that these devices representing the internet in this topology are running BGP. In autonomous systems, 65,000, 65,001, and 65,002. So you need to configure the customer routers to use static default routes so that they can send traffic onto the internet and access the Google DNS server 8.8.4.4. You need to verify that things are working by ensuring that the customer routers can ping the DNS server and that they can ping cisco.com. So make sure that you configure both the ISP side and customer side with PPP between ISP1 and ISP2, configure IP addresses and anything else that's relevant. And again, the side needs to be configured with PPP CHAP. That's the required portion of the lab. But to make the lab more real world, we have some bonus tasks. In the bonus tasks, you need to create a DHCP pool on the customer routers to allocate IP addresses to the PCs. Customer router one, needs to be configured with this IP address on gigabit 000, and it needs to allocate IP addresses to the PC in that subnet. Customer router 2 needs to be configured with this IP address 10.1.2.1 on gigabit 0 slash 0 slash 0, and you need to configure a DHCP pool on the customer router to allocate IP addresses to this PC in this subnet. Now, without giving it away, think about all the DHCP options that you need to allocate to your PCs to allow the PCs to ping cisco.com. The verification for this section is that PC1 and PC2 can ping cisco.com. So think about what's required from a DHCP point of view, but also from a NAT or network address translation point of view. You're going to have to configure both of these routers with network address translation. And to be specific, it's actually port address translation so that the PCs can access the internet. So make sure that these PCs which are using RFC 1918 addresses, in other words, private IP addresses, can access the internet, which is a public network. Notice as an example that the BGP routers on the internet only know about network 8. They have no visibility of network 10. You are not going to advertise network 10 to the internet. Network 10 is a private IP address. It's non-routable on the internet because ISPs will block that network. So, can you complete this lab? Can you configure the network with PPP, PPP CHAP, DHCP, network address translation, and DNS information? I'm purposely not telling you all of the steps, because that's how you're going to learn. 
But if you want to watch me configuring the network and explaining tips and tricks along the way, watch the next video. So can you complete the lab, download the attached packet tracer file and try it yourself? Or once again, watch the next video where I show you how to complete this lab. Thank <laughs> you.